Hey everyone, so the SD-WAN market or the software-defined branch and the software-defined WAN markets, these are at a very important transition right now. Uh, we got started as a company close to seven years ago and we've been leading uh, the industry uh, in the enterprise deployments of SD-WAN. Some of the largest Fortune 500 customers uh, have not only really adopted CloudGenX, they've completed full-blown rollout, uh, rollouts across the entire portfolio of remote offices. When you look at technology transformations, usually there's a curve, that adoption curve that happens in the marketplace, right? You get roughly about 15% of the early adopters uh, of the market that are early adopters adopting technology quickly. And I think we are past that now, finally. Right now, we are getting into the early majority, and usually that's where the chasm comes in, where you start seeing certain vendors, certain products, certain solution sets fall off the map, because they can meet the requirements of the early adopters, not of the early majority and the rest of the market. And so it's a really interesting and exciting time for us at CloudGenX. Uh, when we look at the market here and see what the early majority is trying to do, there's two big problems that they are trying to solve for. Number one, the legacy WAN architectures, right? Where you know, they're not cloud ready, they're based on hardware, not ready for things like IoT, not able to consume uh, uh, the, the, all the transformations that either because of cloud or because of data science or because of uh, uh, IoT is happening at the remote office. The second big challenge that is becoming very uh, apparent to our customers is just the entire branch, right? How do I think of my branch infrastructure and am I stuck deploying hardware-based infrastructure services, whether for firewalling, whether for networking, whether for optimization of my applications and other services, or is there a new model that I can actually bring uh, to the industry? Right? As an industry, we tried hardware appliances, consolidation with things like NFV, all of which haven't taken off into the majority the way it really needs to. So these are two big problems that we have uh, gone ahead and solved. Uh, you know, I'm Kumar Ramachandran, uh, co-founder and uh, CEO of CloudGenX. Uh, and uh, you know, my background is uh, uh, a lot in the branch infrastructure. I worked in this uh, space for, uh, uh, I think, uh, m m at least a couple of decades now. And we started this company about seven years ago, very focused on enterprise. And then more recently, we've seen a lot of adoption, including with service providers and a whole range of people in the market. Uh, for those that haven't followed us recently, uh, just to give you a little bit of a refresher, so we call our product the autonomous SD-WAN. Uh, the way the system behaves is that we accept a series of application policies from the administrator or the user. Uh, it's a core tenet in our system that we're a layer three through layer seven system. Right? In the, the networking industry, it's very fashionable to uh, add the prepend or postpend uh, application, uh, whether it's application-centric or whatnot. Uh, oftentimes we'll say, listen, go look at your routing tables, see what it captures. If it captures packet-based information, then you're a router. You're not a layer three through layer seven device. It's just very, very simple. Uh, what we do is we capture application policies in the areas of security, networking, performance, compliance, all the ways that a business or an IT team describes their infrastructure. And then the system, when it gets into the network, when our software or device is dropped in, it automatically characterizes out your applications, characterizes out your network, and then builds out a full mesh. It's layer three through layer seven, so we can control the underlay and the overlay. So we're a full-blown router and uh, other infrastructure replacement. We automatically aggregate all your WAN capacity. We automatically allocate real-time slices of the network on a per-application session basis. So for the same application, uh, for different uh, users, in real time, the system is computing what is the best possible path, right? What, is, what, what gives you the best possible performance? And at the same time, we do have to constrain uh, the universe of possible networking options by your security and compliance posture. We seamlessly integrate best of breed cloud delivered <coughs> security products natively with our own uh, security solutions that are there on board our uh, software. And the whole thing is a closed loop. So our devices, our controller, as well as not from our controller, all the conversations are via API. 
right? And these are not APIs slapped on an existing CLI, which just makes a mockery of uh, the meaning of an API. When we think API, we're allowing for native rollbacks, native forward, it's stateful, it understands uh, whether an operation has completed or not, et cetera. The underpinning for all of this is the transformation from just layer three and layer three networks to this layer three through layer seven networking model, right? Which is very powerful and very, very transformative. So when you start thinking about things like app response times, latency, jitter, packet loss at the layer three level, and at the layer seven, things like app response times, top talkers, uh, my WAN uh, performance versus my LAN performance, my round trip times broken down uh, by various network segments, all that information is not just being captured by our system. We use all that information back in our algorithms to deliver the best possible user experience, right? And to automate a lot of functions that historically have required manual interventions. So, which is why when we think about, uh, or when we look at our customers, what you see is, yes, they see tremendous uh, network cost savings, right? Uh, Autodesk, uh, close to $10 billion publicly traded software company, 82% reduction in WAN costs, a 600% boost in performance. But it doesn't stop there, right? When you look at a lot of uh, things that are very unique to CloudGenix, CapTrust, they manage about $340 billion in client assets. Very sensitive to network outages, very sensitive to the fact that you know, they want, have, want a lean IT team to be able to manage a global deployment. Us being able to go in and automate trouble ticket uh, or, uh, resolution, being able to avoid issues happening in the network before it even shows up, right? That's had a massive impact in their network. And Columbia, John Spiegel, who works at Columbia Sportswear, uh, he spoke at uh, the Gartner conference, and he has a published article on LinkedIn where he describes how for every 100 sites, they save little over half a million dollars in ongoing operational costs. And uh, uh, you know, what you will see is that many of these savings are not just coming from you know, WAN connectivity arbitrage. They're really coming from oper elimination of operational tasks and the automation using things like DevOps, NetOps that are integral to our system so that you reduce manual fat fingering, you reduce administrative intervention, and you're using data science and automation techniques to eliminate a lot of things that uh, traditionally network engineers had to sit down and babysit uh, their systems. The related shift we are seeing in the marketplace is how the market is transitioning off of Gen 1 SD-WAN products. Uh, uh, looks like you guys had a conversation about one of those last night. Uh, that one uh, is yet another example of uh, a retailer, uh, Aaron's Furniture Store, where between 1,500 to 2,000 locations uh, got rid of their Gen 1 SD-WAN uh, and they've deployed CloudGenX to run their environment. And they're not unique, right? We published any number of case studies uh, along this uh, journey. Uh, what is very, very compelling is that r what we are seeing with uh, SD-WAN and specifically with CloudGenX is not only our ability to make an impact on IT, but also our ab direct ability to make an impact on the business. So one of the largest uh, Fortune 500 banks in the world <laughs> <clears throat> and when I say Fortune 500, I'm uh, uh, being rather, uh, 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 you know, not as favorable in terms of their position. They are, uh, their position in the Fortune 500 is very, very high. Um, and when you look at the business impact that we brought to the table for them, it's been massive. So it's a bank that has several thousands of branches, tens of thousands of ATMs. And when you think about the business impact, right, uh, when you have non-competitive IT, or non-competitive infrastructure, your business line is also non-competitive, right? Because the cost of your infrastructure is very high. I used to work at Citibank many years ago, and what would happen is, uh, you know, the business would come and want to, let's say, deploy an interesting new application or project to the bank branch, and then, you know, someone's going to say, "Listen, we got thousands of locations. We can't. The cost is prohibitive, so business cannot innovate, right?" So then you take look at Gen 1 SD WAN. The Gen 1 SD-WAN and the you know, arbitrage you got between MPLS and broadband, you took away some costs, right? So you got a little more competitive. Maybe you were able to enable uh, UCAS applications for your remote office. But what really happens is that when you look at the advantages that you get with CloudGenix, and you see the customer examples where they have taken down their costs and boosted capabilities significantly simultaneously, now 
projects that were negative in ROI previously for the bank have now have positive ROI. So all of a sudden, all the IT engineers, administrators that were babysitting the network and just be having to say no to their business are now able to go back and unleash guest Wi-Fi, right? The bank looks at the new bank branch uh, to provide a cafe-like experience, right? So you walk in, you have guest Wi-Fi. You look at their ATMs, there's a video enablement on those ATMs, so you get a quick assist. There's the enablement of all kinds of video at the branch to beam in uh, some of your uh, you know, experts, right? So you walk in, the, you know, you, the bank no longer needs to have an expert in every financial product at every one of their thousands of branches. Now I can enable video and other things in a very secure manner. So we're seeing that's a very, very transformative technology, both on the technology side and on the business side. 